chapter 3.9 Pursue, overtake and recover all. 1 Samuel 30 verse 8 So David inquired of the Lord saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. 1 Samuel 30 verse 8 Number one, inquiring of the Lord. The Lord ministered to me this word on Tuesday, 2 April 2013 at 12 p.m. In David's absence from Ziklag, Amalekite raiding parties had burned down the town and carried off the, his family and everyone else as prisoners. After great lament in verse 4, and his men straight to stone him, David inquired of the Lord through Abiata the priest concerning his will in this matter. The inquiry was made by means of an effort, the high priest's apron, like the garment which contained the Urim and the Tumim, the secret stones used to discern the will of God. Exodus 28 verse 30 The Lord gave David the nod to pursue his enemies. He assured him that he would overtake and recover all that the Amalekites had stolen from him. Like David, there are various things which the devil has stolen from us and the Lord is giving us power and anointing to pursue, overtake and recover all. For David, it meant recovery of not just what he had lost, but all that the enemy had stolen from others. Assured of victory in verse 8, David and his men pursued the Amalekites to the Peso Raven, 20 miles south of Ziklag. When they finally found them, with the help of an Egyptian slave of the Amalekites in verse 11 to 15, David's 400 men who were ragged enough to stand the rigorous march in verse 9 to 10 defeated the Amalekites except for 400 young Amalekites who escaped on camel back and recovered all their families and property intact in verse 17 to 20. The 200 who had remained behind by the Beso Raven in verse 10 to 21 wanted a share of the Amalekite booty. So reasonable did their request sound to David that he established a principle that day that would thereafter prevail. 1 Samuel 30 verse 24 tells us the share of the men who stayed with the supplies is to be the same as that of him who went down to the battle. 1 Samuel 30 verse 24 but David's diplomatic masterstroke was his return of the properties stolen by the Amalekites from the cities and towns of Judah. Verse 26 to 31 tells us, Now David came to Ziklag. He sent some of the spoil to the elders of Judah, to his friends, saying, Here is a present for you from the spoil of the enemies of the Lord. Verse 26 to 31. Never would they forget his concern for them. And when the time came for him to declare his kingship at Hebron, he no doubt enjoyed their enthusiastic support. 1. Pursuing is a deliberate attempt to run after your adversary and lay a demand on all that he has stolen from you. 2. Overtaking involves some sort of skill in the way we fight our enemy. We should have a revelation of who he is, how he operates, and his weakest link if we are to overtake him, outwit, outmaneuver, and outmanipulate the enemy. Number three, recover all. Refers to the rescuing of all that the enemy has stolen from you and others. David strengthened himself and asked God whether he would be successful in his attempt to fight the enemy. Likewise, we should always involve God in all our battles. As soon as he gives us the nod, we should pursue, overtake, and recover all. Number two, pursue. He went himself in person and took with him all the force he had in pursuit of the Malachites in verse 9 to 10. See how quickly, how easily, how effectually the mutinity among the soldiers was quelled by the, his patience and faith. When they spoke of stoning him, 
if he had spoken of hanging them or had ordered that the ringleaders, the faction should be immediately have their heads struck off, though it would have been just, yet it might have been of pernicious consequence to his interest in his critical juncture. And while he and his men were contenting, the Amalekites would have clearly carried off their spoil. But when he, as a deaf man, had not smothered his resentments and encouraged himself in the Lord, the tumult of the people was stilled by the gentleness and power of God on their hearts, and being thus mildly treated, they were now as ready to follow his foot as they were but a little before to fly in his face. Meekness is the security of any government. In quietness and trust is your strength. Isaiah 30 verse 15 All his men were willing to go along with him in pursuit of the Amalekites, and he needed them all. But he was forced to drop a third part of them by the way. 200 out of 600 were so fatigued with their long march and so sunk under the load of their grief that they could not pass to the brook Beso, but stayed behind there. The fatigued must have been the ones who spoke of stoning David. This would humble them. This was one, a great trial of David's faith, whether he could go on in, de in a dependence upon the word of God, when so many of his men failed him. When we are disappointed and discouraged in our expectations from second causes, then to go with cheerfulness, confiding in the divine power, this is giving glory to God by believing against hope in hope. The art of demoralization, giving up without a fight. Joshua 7 verse 1 to 5. Number two, a great instance of David's tenderness to his men that he would be he would by no means urge them beyond their strength though the case itself was so urgent the son of david thus considers the frame of his followers who are not all alike strong and vigorous in their spiritual pursuits and conflicts second corinthians 12 verse 9 tells us and he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness second corinthians 12 verse 9 Number three, overtake. Providence threw one in their way that gave them intelligence of the enemy's motions and guided their ways. A poor Egyptian lad, scarcely alive, is made instrumental of a great deal of good to David. God chooses the foolish things of the world with them to confound the wise. Observe one, his master's cruelty to him. He had got out of him all the service he could, and when the lad fell sick, probably being over-toiled with his work, he barbarously left him to perish in the field. When he was in no such haste, but he might have put him into some of his carriages and brought him home, or at least have left him wherewithal to support himself. That master has the spirit of an Amalekite, not of an Israelite, that can thus use a servant worse than one would use a beast. The tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. This Amalekite thought he should now have servant enough of the Israelite captives and therefore cared not what became of his Egyptian slave, but could willingly let him die in a ditch for want of necessaries while he himself was eating and drinking verse 16 justly did providence make this poor servant that was thus basely abused instrumental towards the destruction of a whole army of the Amalekites and his master among the rest for God he is the cry of the oppressed servants number two David's compassion to him Though he had reason to think he was one of those that had helped to destroy Ziklag, yet finding him in distress, he generously relieved him, not only with bread and water, verse 11, but with figs and raisins, verse 12. Though the Israelites were in haste and had no great plenty for themselves, yet they would not forbear to deliver one 
that was drawn unto death, nor say, Behold, we knew it not. Proverbs 24, verse 11 to 12. Those who are unworthy, the name of the Israelites, who shut up the bowels of their compassion from persons in distress, it was also prudently done to relieve this Egyptian, for though despicable, he was capable of doing them service. So it proved, though they were not certain of this when they relieved him, it is a good reason why we should neither do an injury nor deny a kindness to any man that we know not about. But sometime or other it may be in his power to return either a kindness or an injury. Number three, the intelligence David received from this poor Egyptian when he had come to himself, he gave him an account concerning his party. A. What they had done. Verse 14. We made an invasion, etc. The countries which David had pretended to Akish to have made an incursion upon they really had invaded and laid waste. What was then false now proved to be true. B. Where they had gone. Verse 15. This he promised David to inform him upon condition he would spare his life and protect him from his master, who if he could hear of him again, he thought, would add cruelty to cruelty. Such an opinion this poor Egyptian had of obligation of an oath that he desired no greater security for his life than this swear unto me by God not by the gods of Egypt or Amalek but by the one supreme God number four recover all David being directed to the place where they lay securely celebrating their triumphs fell upon them and he used to pray so his desire upon his enemies. Number one, the spoilers were cut off. The Amalekites finding the booty was rich and having got with it, as they thought, out of reach of the danger, were making themselves very merry with it. Verse 16, all thoughts of war were laid aside, nor were they in any haste to, love, to house their prey, but spread themselves abroad on the earth in the most careless manner that could be and there they were found eating and drinking and dancing probably in honor of their idol gods to whom they gave the praise of their success in this posture david surprised them which made the conquest of them and the blow he gave them the more easy to him and the more dismal, dismal to them then are sinners nearest to ruin when they cry peace and safety and put the evil day far from them nor does anything give our spiritual enemies more advantage against us than sensuality and indulgence of the flesh eating and drinking and dancing have been the soft and pleasant way in which many have gone down to the congregation of the dead finding them thus off their guard and from their arms many of them it may be drunk and unable to make any resistance he put them all to the sword and only 400 escaped verse 17 thus this the triumphing of the wicked short and wrath comes on them as on Belshazzar when they they are in the midst of their happiness number two the spoil was recovered and brought off, and nothing was lost, but a great deal gotten. A. They, they retrieved all their own. Verse 18 to 19. David rescued his two wives. This is mentioned particularly because this pleased David more than all the rest of the achievements. Providence had so ordered it that the Amalekites carefully preserved all that they had taken, concluding that they kept it for themselves, though really they preserved it for the right owners, so that there was nothing lacking to them. So it proved when they concluded all was gone, so much better is God's oftentimes to us than our own fears. 
our Lord Jesus was indeed the son of David and the son of Abraham in this resembling them both Abraham Genesis 14 verse 16 and David here that he took the prey from the mighty and led captivity captive but this was not all B they took all the that belonged to the Amalekites besides besides flocks and herds either such as were taken from the Philistines and others which David had the, the disposal of by the law of the law of war or perhaps he made a sally into the enemy's country and fetched off these flocks and herds thence as interest for this for his own this drove was put in the van of triumph with this proclamation this is David's spoil this we may think for him those who lately spoke of stoning him now caressed him and carried him up because they got by him more than they had lost thus are the world and its sentiments governed by interest number five david's diplomacy in sharing the spoils when david said to his troops this is david's spoil verse 20 he wasn't claiming the wealth of the amalekites for himself in a selfish way but only stating that he would see its distribution each of his fighting men received their part and so did the 200 soldiers who were too weary to continue the pursuit this generosity of david bothered some of the evil men and troublemakers in david's band verse 21 but david paid them no heed he politely laid it down as a rule in his army that all the spoils would be divided among all the men including those who did not actually fight the enemy after all it was the lord who gave them the victory so nobody had the right to claim the spoils for himself as if the lord owed it to him god was gracious and generous to deliver the enemy into their hands and they should be gracious and generous to share the wealth with others david also sent presents from the spoils to the elders of the towns in the southern judah the places where the, he and his men hidden during the wanderings the people of the these towns had helped david escape Saul, and david felt they deserved some kind of payment for their kindness after all if saul had heard what they did their very lives might have been in jeopardy but david was doing more than thanking these leaders he was also paving the way for the time when he would return to their land as israel king which was not in the distant future number six my experience when the lord ministered to me this word i was meditating on the word of god during my morning prayer walks along the railway line that leads to mutare from harare to eastley i remember the lord dropping this word upon my spirit the devil had stolen killed and destroyed my marriage business and ministry when I read this scripture, 1 Samuel 30, verse 1 to 8, the Lord started showing me how David's story was similar to what I had over the months and years endured and suffered in my marriage, business, and ministry. My marriage had been destroyed beyond reason. We were on separation at that time. My business had been restored, but again I faced the obstacle of having to deliver an order from Stanbic Bank that I did not have the working capital to fulfill. I contemplated on whether or not I should lay my car down as collateral security for order financing. My ministry, even though the Lord would minister to me, had also been destroyed. I was not going to church because of the effects of the troubles in my marriage. My life was in total mess. As usual, I would wake up in the morning around 2 a.m. To 3 a.m. to read the word of God and pray and then at daybreak I would then go for meditation and prayer walks at the rail line that day I walked all the way to Zimfos gum trees where I had created a prayer altar I then walked back along the railway line as far as Eastley past Glenara Road as I sat down on the railway line the Lord began to minister to me this word pursue 
overtake, recover all. He showed me that I needed to have faith in laying down my car as collateral security for the processing of the stand big order for snap frames. Apparently, I needed $2,000, which I had tried to source from everywhere else with no breakthrough. This needed serious faith, and the Lord had to minister to me another word, What is that in your hand? Exodus 4, verse 1 to 9. This word was based on the story of Moses who had asked God for collateral security as he sought to approach Pharaoh with the message from God, Let my people go. Exodus 5 verse 1. God then asked him, What is that in your hand? Exodus 4 verse 1 to 9. It is a rod, Moses replied. God then asked him to throw it down and it became a snake. He then asked him to pick it up and it became a rod. With this miracle, Moses gathered strength and faith in God to approach Pharaoh. It was from this word that I also gathered strength and faith in God to lay down my car as collateral security and got the $2,000 to process my order. After exactly three weeks, I managed to recover my car after having been paid by my client. The Lord then linked this word, what is that in your hand, Exodus 4, verse 1 to 9, to pursue, overtake, recover all. He showed me how by pursuing my business, I would overtake and recover all that the enemy had stolen from me, my marriage and ministry. It so happened as the Lord had instructed. When I sought to pay for the stand big order, my South African partner, Wendy Smith, then ordered me to use the same money to pay for our exhibition at the ZITF 2013 in Bluweyo. I then traveled to Victoria Falls the following morning to negotiate for the outdoor advertising license from the municipality of Victoria Falls. As I returned from there, my marriage and ministry was also restored. With one act of obedience to God's word, I managed to recover all the enemy had stolen from my life. The Lord instructed me to pursue my business and in the process I managed to overtake the enemy's devices and recovered all that he had stolen, killed and destroyed in my life. As a way of confirming this word, the Lord then ministered it through Bishop Gomwe on Sunday 26 May 2013. It was from this period in my life that I started developing confidence and trust in the word of God no matter the obstacles. I realized the Lord was entrusting me with a great prophetic ministry. I pursued all the stolen things in my life. I realized that all the promises of God, 2 Peter 1 verse 3 to 4, upon my life were sure and amen. I started looking for the dead things in my life and started prophesying upon them. The Lord started showing me from that time the difference between restoration and resurrection power. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 6 to 11. I realized that there are things that the Lord had deliberately allowed to die in my life so as to see whether I would have in His power to recover all. I got to a point in my marriage because of the promises of resurrection power, Isaiah 53 verse 2 to 5, I was not moved at all when I saw things crumbling. I would not react according to the storms and dictates of the devil in marriage, business and ministry. I knew clearly that the Lord was in total control and that unless a seed dies, there is no resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15, 35-36 The story of David taught me not to cry the way they cried. He taught me to inquire of the Lord and in inquiring, we know God's answer. Pursue, overtake, recover all. Amen.